Welcome to Conscious Profits Unfiltered. This is your host, Sebastian Nam. What's up, fam? Today, I had on an incredible man by the name of Tim Schur, a top multi-award winning hypnotist who has been featured all over television. And if you stick around, you'll actually see that I asked him to hypnotize me live on the show. He has facilitated over 15,000 individual coaching sessions and hundreds of group training experiences over the last 32 years and discovered how to quickly eliminate anxiety and self-sabotage while skyrocketing productivity and leadership impact. As an award-winning leadership speaker, Tim has helped corporate clients earn millions in annual revenue using the One Belief Away method from his book, One Belief Away. Tim's approach is so effective, he's been featured on ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox News, and the TEDx stage. He's also the founder of the Global Legends Summit and host of the popular How to Be Mesmerizing podcast. I want to give a special thank you and shout out to the sponsor of today's show, Conscious Capitalism Los Angeles, whose aim is to connect, inspire, and cultivate conscious business leaders in LA, and is a key piece of a larger scale worldwide conscious capitalism movement. Now stick around and enjoy this epic show. Tim, welcome to the show. Uh, thanks, Sebastian. It's always great to hang out with you. Absolutely. So for anybody that doesn't know, I was just on Tim's podcast. So when that gets published, um, you know, I'll share it along with my with my people, too. So I'm excited to see how that turns out. Um, so, Tim, yeah. I, I always start my podcast by asking this, this question to everybody. When was your last oh shit moment? What's the first thing that comes to mind? <laughs> Oh, I don't know what happened this morning. <laughs> you know, well, you know, entrepreneurs and business leaders, we are problem solvers at the core, right? We're right. always trying to figure out what to do to solve problems or find solutions. And so I have found that on many occasions, I've had the best of days and the worst of days on the same day every day, right? There's always something going on. And so instead of getting caught up in it, what I've learned to do is just go, huh, interesting. I wonder where, what's the creative opportunity that's going to come out of this situation instead sure. of getting caught up in it, which is what I did all the time. You know, I get stressed out and overwhelmed. And now, you know, as I've gotten a little bit older, I'm just like, well, of course, something crazy has happened because that's how life is. But I'm sure, you know, we're going to get through it or something really cool is going to come from it. So when those situations happen and they regularly do, I'm more just like, all right, <laughs> let's roll with it. So that was a that was a work related thing this morning. Um, actually, this morning has been fairly smooth. So, oh, okay. so yeah. So I guess now something's coming this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> so every day, oh shit, moment every day. <laughs> yeah, I got gotcha. you. But right. I, yeah. So nothing, uh, nothing that I, I can't handle. <laughs> right on, Tim. You know, you say we are one belief away from exponential growth, which is the title of your book that I have right here. Yeah, and yeah. Why just in the one like in a couple sentences, why is it one belief? Because to me, it's natural to think that there's so many things that have to happen to have exponential growth or to have a lot of success. Why is it one belief? It's one. Well, so there's two answers to that. First, you know, although there might be a lot of challenges and a lot of moving parts going on when you're being successful, you can usually follow it all the way back to one particular um, one particular belief that somebody has that is creating all these other problems, right? So let's let's use an example. So if I'm working with an entrepreneur and they have this unconscious belief in their mind that they're not really worthy of the success that they're having, then they will find that they have all these challenges with following through on deadlines, with um, showing up on time for meetings. It will feel like they're always sabotaging themselves in some way. And so they have all these presenting symptoms or challenges or, or difficulties that they're having, but you can trace them all back to that core belief that I'm not worthy. And so the imposter syndrome people have, um, being able to really step in as a leader, uh, being embarrassed and not wanting to have transparency, uh, maybe in the company because people are going to find out how much more money you make than the people that are on your team. There's a lot of uh, worries and pressures that will come from that single belief, that idea that I'm not worthy. And so when you upgrade that belief to I am worthy, you know, I have put in the blood, the sweat, the tears, I have gone through yeah. tremendous uncertainty to be able to create what we've created. I deserve all the success and prosperity and adulations that I get. And, and then I can use that to pour into other people. So that's an idea of a belief that you can shift. 
Uh, a lot of times we feel like we've got to solve, solve all these different problems in our life when usually if you solve the core one, the foundational issue, all those other challenges will work themselves mm. out. Yeah. Yeah. So well said. Yeah. Uh, it's an interesting one. The, the, you mentioned a little thing about transparency and thing, and the whole thing with uh, as leaders making more money and things like that's actually something that, you know, we went through in one of my agencies uh, mm -hmm. not too long ago. And it was just having mm -hmm. that shift of why don't, why don't we just make it so that everybody knows exactly how much, you know, the client is paying and everybody needs mm -hmm. to understand that there's a lot of other factors that go into it outside of the team members that are getting paid, right? In, in mm -hmm. terms of, you know, keeping the lights on, things like that. But yeah. it felt so much better when we had that shift of this is how it is. And we just want to, we still want to make sure that everybody's happy and, and the full transparency aspect of it. Yeah. Um, and, and you find that people are cool with that. Yeah. I mean, when you're the leader of the company and you're out there making things happen and you've put in a thousand hours before, you know, that it, the company was even formed, sure. people realize that, yeah, you want to be successful and they want you to be successful because we like to hang around successful people. Sure. You know, I, I have a I have a quick story I can tell you about that if you're interested. Please do. Yeah. So I was coaching a group of what we call diamonds in the Amway business, you know, as the people that were at the top of the food chart and then they would have yeah. their downline, right? With all right. the people that work for them selling the vitamins and all the stuff that Amway sells. And so uh, so I'm working with these people who are the, you know, millionaire salespeople and who've built a great business. And um, they were telling a story about how they were having a hard time figuring out how much money to or how much time and energy to, to pour into their downline to help them grow their business. And there was a guy and he said, I need to tell everybody this story. He says, during the summer in June, I decided that instead of working on my business, I was going to spend all my time developing the people that are in the middle and the bottom of my food chain, right? The mm -hmm. people, not my top performers, but the people in the middle and the bottom, I was going to spend all my energy helping them grow their business. And that would make us all more successful. So he said, I did that. I completely ignored my business. I put a hundred percent into everybody else. And he said, over the next three months, our business and as a whole dropped and it really kind of freaked me out. And so I got a hold of all my top performers because all their numbers had lowered as well. And I said, what's going on here? And finally, someone spoke up and they said, well, we've been watching your numbers because we all have been inspired by you. And we've seen that over the summer, your numbers have dropped significantly. And we realized that we thought that if you can't succeed in this climate, then we definitely can't. And so he realized that you have to succeed and you have to be successful in order for other people to have someone to look up to, in order for someone to feel inspired by. And if sure. you neglect what you're doing to take care of yourself, just so you can pour into everybody else, although it's honorable, the idea, it's not effective. So you've got to find that balance and you've got to be able to shine and help others shine at the same time. I love that. That's, yeah. that's a great way to not play it small. What great way to think about why you shouldn't be playing it small ever. Love yeah. that. Well said. Cool story. Yeah. Thanks, Tim. Yeah. Talk about the human operating system. Yeah. So your brain is kind of like the hard drive. Your unconscious mind is the hard drive, right? Your conscious mind is kind of like the computer programmer, right? And so your unconscious mind is the hard drive. It stores all your beliefs, all your life experiences, all the attitudes and values and everything that forms who you are in that hard drive. Well, you have software running in that hard drive and that software are your beliefs, and if you have a belief, you know, what kind of world do you live in? Is this a, a loving world? Is it a cruel world? Is it a world where there's opportunity or is there a world where, you know, nobody cares about you and you've got to fight for everything? You know, what kind of world do you live in? Is it like a box of chocolates? You never know what you're going to get. Is life a school or is life a bitch and then you die, right? Yeah. Whatever belief yeah. you have, that is your driving software. And that software will determine what you pay attention to, what actions you take, and what actions you don't. And so if you want to grow or take yourself to the next level or take your leadership team to the next level, then what you do is you go into the hard drive of your brain and you do an update. Our right. smartphones, we get updates all the time, right? We're right. always updating our iOS system or our computers are updating, right? right? Because it gets rid of, um, of malware and bugs, right? Well, we have also downloaded a lot of malware. And so, you know, we've downloaded these, 
these programs in our mind that makes us feel like we're not worthy, we're not good enough, we're not special enough, or you know, all the, the fear of rejection, the fear of abandonment, all these deep feelings that we often have. You know, most entrepreneurs are trying to prove that, that they are good enough. And so they're constantly creating and building and trying to add value because it's like trying to prove to the world that I'm yeah. good, right? Which is why that's we can vacillate between yeah, anxiety much, and conquer the world. In, in my, my personality, like I do an Enneagram and the type that I am and all that stuff, that is what I'm constantly trying to do. I'm trying to prove, show value to tell myself that I am worthy of this, whatever it is. Yeah. And the truth is you already are. Right. Right. You know, Tim. Yeah. Let me quote exactly this. Let me, this is quoting you and it, to go off what we we're just talking about. Humans download malware, AKA self-limiting beliefs that hide in the operating system of your unconscious mind, holding you back from reaching your full potential. So how and why do these self-limiting beliefs get into the un unconscious mind or subconscious mind from the get go? Is it only from age zero to seven that downloaded that hardware when you were not really just kind of you're perceiving everything from your parents and your grandparents and the world. And then you go into this world and later on that that's, that's the hardware that you're, you know, that you're operating under. Yeah. That's pretty much what happens, right? We're not just limited to it, but we are absorbing the uh, beliefs of those who are raising us when we're young. And then um, as we get older, we often, because we have those beliefs, it causes us to experience or at least interpret situations in a specific way based on those beliefs, right? So if you have a belief that, you know, you're not safe and then you're in a classroom situation and they put you in front of a class and you start to feel nervous, then your brain says, well, it's because you're not safe. Now, all of a sudden you have a fear of public speaking 20 years later, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And so, um, but you can have experiences where maybe a teacher comes in and says, no, you are actually brilliant. That's what happened to me in uh, my senior year. I was terrified of public speaking and now I've won mm -hmm. awards for it. But I was horrified by public. My eyelids would shake. I thought they were going to fly off my face. I was so scared of speaking. Right. And so but I did a class in my senior year, uh, a speech class, and I just talked about how people freak out giving speeches. And I basically just freaked out, but made it look like it was part of the speech. <laughs> and everybody was laughing. And the teacher in the back of the room said, that was the best one ever. That's and awesome. that got into my brain and created a new belief that, hey, uh. I could be a cool speaker. Right. And so, so yes, so we have these experiences and I have found over 32 years of studying us humans and doing tens of thousands of coaching sessions that our core beliefs are what drives our behavior. And if you want to have a fulfilling, successful life, upgrade the operating, operating system of your brain. So before we talk about how to upgrade it, how do we know, how do I know, how do we know if, there is a self-limiting belief in the unconscious mind if it's unconscious versus just maybe a belief that's conscious, right? So how can I really tell between the software and the hardware? Mm -hmm. That's a really good question because a lot of times when I'm coaching people, they will come to me and say, well, I know what the problem is. Mm -hmm. Right. Or I remember a time when I was in, you know, eighth grade and I'm pretty sure this is where the where the issue is. And then what we would do is we would take them back to that moment in time where the belief was formed and it didn't. It wasn't that mm -hmm. it was something else. Right. Or I have an experience where I help people release a lot of toxic emotions, anger, guilt, shame, things like that. And they often think that the person that they're holding anger towards might be one parent. And actually, the other parent comes in the room instead. You know, so a lot of times we think we know what it is and it ends up not being that at all, especially entrepreneurs. We can be so smart sometimes that our own intelligence is what's sabotaging us because we think we already got it all figured out. You know, the, the when I'm working with leaders, there's always someone who thinks, well, I don't really need this. This is for my people. This They need this training. And then immediately I know now nah, you need it more than everybody then. You know, <laughs> if you think you already know it all, then because <laughs> all the true masters I've ever met are the first to tell you oh, I'm still learning. Sure. <laughs> sure. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I love that. So essentially, you in order to be able to tell, you've got to be a, you got to be willing to do some deep work. It's not just you don't just you think, you know, but maybe not. So it's always good to to seek some help and, and look inside to, to really get into those self-admitting beliefs, would you say? 
Yeah, there's an old expression that says you can't see the label when you're in the bottle. Oh, that's good. Mm. I haven't heard that. Yeah. So it's really cool. It's really hard to see your own biases, your own blind spots. Mm. So, so you gotta get out of that bottle and look at yourself from a different angle. That's exactly right. Yeah. That's super interesting. I yeah. love that. Yeah. I love that. Um, in your book, Tim, you have a chapter dedicated to getting comfortable in the uncomfortable. And this yeah. is something that I try to practice every day, even if it's it's in my workouts or my exercise routine or whatever it is, mm -hmm. uh, I practice this. Now, I know it's good for me because I've heard it, that it's good for me. And, and obviously, the more you practice getting comfortable in uncomfortable situations, that means that you start to get more comfortable and you're naturally growing. Yeah. My question is, when do you finally get comfortable? Do you get to just get comfortable and just – there's – um. You know, there's, I, I'm going to bring something else up and try to, you know, we'll, we'll see how, how this works together. But uh, my mother, who is an amazing coach her, herself, she talks about, you know, don't make yourself a, a, a human self-improvement project, right? So <laughs> if you're constantly become like, it's one thing is to have a growth mindset and to grow. But if you're only in that mindset all day, every day, and you're yeah. a self-improvement project, right? So it's... Uh, how do you think that there's a balance between that getting uncomfortable in the discomfort and doing it maybe on a daily? Do you do it all the time? Do you do it in every aspect of life? And when do you relax, slow down a little? So that's great. I admire your mother's wisdom. That was really smart. You know, I really like that. She's right. You can't obsess with yourself. I've, I've met people who are self-growth junkies. Mm. You know, they go to all the seminars and they're always doing some healing and they're always... And when you actually take a deeper look under the hood, their life is still a train wreck. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so yeah, you don't want to do that. Here's how I approach it. So I think it, it's not just knowing how to feel comfortable in uncomfortable situations. It's, again, the beliefs behind it. I'm safe even though I'm in a situation that feels uncomfortable. Okay. It's a belief shift. I know that even though we're in a problem, we're in a challenge, and it is stressful right now. I don't have to go through it saying everything's wonderful. I'm going to feel the stress because it's a human emotion. But I have a belief in my mind that it's going to work out, that we're going to end up stronger, that no matter how frustrating it is, we're all like cats. No matter how high you throw them in the air, they always land on their feet. And we are going to land on our feet and be even better because of this challenge that we're going through. You know, diamonds aren't formed under, you know, feathers. It's through tremendous pressure over a long period of time that they emerge valuable, priceless, and yet so strong they can cut through steel. Mm -hmm. Now, the other piece of this, Sebastian, that I have found helps uh, a lot is that when I'm feeling really stressed or uncomfortable, I, I've learned over the years that your biggest breakthroughs are hidden in the places you don't want to go. So mm -hmm. if I'm resisting or procrastinating, I actually recognize now that's a breakthrough opportunity for me. So if there's something where I'm feeling really uncomfortable, I got to call somebody, I've got to make an apology, I've got to work on something that's really difficult. I realize in my brain now that that's actually an opportunity for something special, that there's a lot of pleasure on the other side of that. We're always trying to avoid pain, but if we realize there's pleasure on the other side, like you're working out, but you realize that afterwards you're going to feel awesome or your body is going to be really, you take off your shirt and you're like, yeah, you know, then there's a payoff on the other side of it. And so you start looking for those opportunities. So now you're not afraid of pressure. Mm -hmm. You're looking at it as an opportunity to win. And that also shifts how it feels. Yeah. Yeah. That's beautifully put. It's true. And uh, I'm starting to see that more. So, uh, it, in relationships, even like you were saying, it's what, what is it that I'm uncomfortable about maybe having to apologize or bring this up with a friend um, or even in, in dating what, you know, if, if dating or with your wife or your relationship, you know, what about this subject that really makes me uncomfortable to bring up, but it's burning inside. And so there's an opportunity for growth right there. And it may just be self growth. It may be Work you have to do on your own, or it may be, in fact, something that would be beautiful to be uh, create a safe space and talk about it together. That's um, exactly right. right. You know, yeah. and so if we're talking about relationships, you know, sometimes we have to swallow our pride or, you know, our ego if and we need to apologize. And a lot of times, because it makes us so frustrated or uncomfortable, we will withhold doing so or delay it. And that yeah. time delay actually makes it worse. 
So as soon as you get the instinct of, I need to call this person, I need to apologize, I need to have this conversation, the moment you recognize that that's what you need to do and the faster you act on it, the more productive it becomes. And so you can take your pain and turn it into purpose and it can become pleasurable as a result. And you can shift from pain to pleasure really quickly by taking action and being intentional and figuring out what you want to bring to the situation and the outcome you want to cause, as opposed to being frustrated and lingering in it and worrying uh, you know, about what's going to happen to you or, and sweeping it under the rug, which is what many people do. Yeah. Taking action on that stuff is, can be really tough. Uh, taking action sooner than later. I heard recently, I, I'll be honest, I can't remember where I heard this, but I thought it was super cool that um, it was about cows and bulls and both cows and bulls can sense when there's a storm coming. And mm -hmm. so when the storm starts to come, naturally the cows, what they do is they begin to run away uh, mm -hmm. before the storm comes. So you're thinking that's really smart. The storm is coming. The cows sense that it's coming and they start to run away from the storm. And what happens is eventually the storm catches up. And since the cows are running and the storm is coming, it's kind of a long lasting, lots of pain that they're enduring throughout the storm because they're running in the same exact direction as the storm. And so when the bulls sense the storm coming, before the storm even comes, they start going head into the storm. So they run into the storm, they go through the storm and the pain is really short, really short. So they get right past the storm. It's really quick and easy and they're done with it. Oh, so that is beautiful. I love cool, that right? story. I love that story. Yeah. Oh my goodness. You know, I have a po uh, poem. It's right over there on my wall. I look at it every day and it says, fate whispers to the warrior. You cannot withstand the storm. And the warrior smiles back and says, I am the storm. <laughs> and I believe that that's how we are. We're bulls. We're entrepreneurs. We are the storm. What are we worried about? We need to run head in Hell yeah. you know, and conquer this. I am the storm. I love that. I love it. So, Tim, how do we upgrade the unconscious beliefs? So there's a couple of ways of doing it. The fastest way is really get the book that you held up, One Belief Away at Amazon, and go through the experiences. Because okay. I spent 30 years and going with, I did 15,000 individual sessions trying to figure out what those exact experiences are. Well, and that really is. 15,000 individual sessions. 15,000 individual sessions. It took me wow. over you know, two decades to work with that many people one-on-one. -on -one. And so that's a lot of time walking around in people's unconscious minds. I had one goal. How do I get rid of anxiety and insecurity and feeling like mm -hmm. I'm not good enough? Right. And I found it. And now I'm getting it out to the world, right? Ooh. This is how you do it. Way faster than therapy and counseling, way more effective than drugs. Hey guys, I just want to remind you, if you want to find more content like this, you can visit SebastianNaum.com. That's Sebastian, N-A-U-M.com. You can also get a ton of other marketing resources for myself and my agencies, ranging from SEO to social media, influencer marketing, branding, web development, and more. Again, that's SebastianNaum.com. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the show. You know, this is the way. And so you upgrade those unconscious beliefs by finding the feelings of anxiety or pressure or whatever's holding you back. You take that back to the original event or situation where that belief was formed. And then you give yourself the love, the support, the encouragement, the protection, the understanding that you did not have as a kid. You give that to yourself now and then you upgrade the belief in what this means. So you go from I'm not worthy to I am. I'm not enough to I'm more than enough. And when you change that foundational belief, it shifts what you pay attention to, how you act, how you show up, what you focus on, how you deal with adversity and challenge and uncertainty. It completely transforms you. And so you upgrade the beliefs, you release the toxic energy, and then you learn how to manage your confidence. And then once you feel a sense of security, especially as a leader or a business owner, then you don't have to make it about you anymore. And then your whole life becomes about serving and empowering others. You become mm -hmm. others focused instead of self focused. And that is when you really start to see magic and miracles show up in your life. Yeah. So Tim, in, in your journey doing that, you became a speaker and you've spoken a ton. Um, how many do you have any idea how many times you've spoken in public or how many people yeah. you've spoken to? Yeah, a, a, a lot, right? Because like I've been on TV 50 times, 
Okay. Right. And so I've, I've spoken all over the, the country and in yeah. London. And and so um, uh, until, of course, COVID came around and made all sure. those little keynotes disappear. But but my mission is to teach people how to get rid of needless emotional suffering. Mm -hmm. And so I've been look, using every format there is, you know, every and now with these the ability to have these interviews like this with you is extraordinary because now I can hang out with people all over the world you know, and do these seminars and, and, uh, and to get the message out because people yeah. are walking around with magic inside of them and they just either don't realize it or don't know how to access it because we don't learn this stuff from our friends and family. We don't learn it from church. We don't get it from school. And I went to school for, you know, I went to college and two grad schools and I didn't get the tools that I'm teaching from that either, you know, for, I went to school for psychology and I didn't get the tools that I'm sharing from that. And so, uh, you know, it, people just don't know sure. that they have this magic inside of them. They have the feeling they know that they're here to do something great. But a lot of times we don't know how to connect the dots or how to actually enjoy ourselves when we have created the breakthroughs, the financial yeah. rewards, the happy relationships, you know, or the good health. And then we get we always feel like there's something missing and we need to have something else and there's always something more and the more that you're missing isn't outside of you it's what's going on in the operating absolutely. system yeah absolutely so tim you do a lot of hypnosis yeah. um talk to me about hypnosis and why it's so powerful yeah i became one of the top hypnotists in the world and uh it started out by me having an experience that i wasn't expecting so it was like my sophomore year of psychology i was in a counseling processes class and and um uh, they had guest speakers coming in and one was a hypnotist and they asked for a volunteer. And I was like, yeah, I'll cluck like a chicken. I didn't know anything about it. Yeah. And, um, but I closed my eyes and the person was taking me through this relaxation. And it was the first time that that knot in my stomach just kind of disappeared. And I'm really? like, what is this? Yeah. Cause I was always full of nervousness and anxiety and uh. always very hyper and worried about what everybody was thinking about me. And, and so when that went away, I was like, whoa. Now, of course, it lasted for a couple of days and then the anxiety started coming back because mm. I was good at doing anxiety. I didn't know <laughs> I was doing it, right? I thought the world was doing it to me, but um, sure. uh, but I'm like- You were good at doing anxiety. Yeah, I was good at making myself feel anxious. You know, I asked mm. lousy questions. I focused on what I was afraid of. You know, I would breathe through my mouth instead of my nose. So I was activating my fight or flight response instead of my relaxation response. I'd stare down instead of up. When you stare down, it intensifies the story you're telling yourself and the feelings you're having. When you look up, it quiets the voice in your mind. You don't have to meditate for 20 years. You just look up. Mm. All these little mind hacks that I've learned that uh, are strategies, they're formulas that you can use. You know, So I'm kind of like the geek squad for your brain. And so we do these little strategies and it shifts. I mean, my specialty for a long time was helping people to get rid of panic attacks. You know, I was so good at that and phobias. You know, I helped a, a, a weatherman on local TV uh, who was terrified of spiders. And uh, in 10 minutes, I got a tarantula sitting on his arm. You know, I, was, I got really good at doing oh, stuff like that. Was, yeah. that through, was that through hypnosis? That was through the hypnosis and the NLP. And the, it's a combination of all the th tools that I've acquired over the years. Yeah. And so hypnosis just means you are working with your unconscious. It gives you access to the hard drive. Right. Mm. And so that's why it's so effective and so much faster. And it's very relaxing. It feels like a massage for your mind. So when you have the combination of deep relaxation and then accessing those core beliefs and upgrading it, I can help you create a breakthrough in 30 minutes that you wouldn't have been able to do in 30 years doing it tra the traditional way. Yeah. Wow. What is the shortest amount of time that you can access that in and, and hypnotize someone. And I had someone have a breakthrough in 30 seconds. It was so fun because we were going to do the hypnosis and this person was very suggestible. And I realized it was one little shift in their perception. And so I had her look up at my finger and I stabbed my fingers because we had worked together and she went into that relaxing state. I gave her one idea and then she immediately shifted and opened her eyes and she's like, oh my gosh, I get it now. <laughs> That's not my stuff. That was my mom's stuff. This is amazing. And I looked at my watch. Wow. I'm like, it's been like 30 seconds. And she says, I, I think we're done. 
<laughs> and I said, okay, see you next week. <laughs> I mean, it was like, we were both laughing. We're like, holy crap. Because it was just one idea, which is how over all these years, you know, I, I came up with the idea of one belief away, you know, one shift. And then it changes everything. You know, if you're looking at your hand and then all of a sudden you see this side of it and you're like, whoa, it's a whole different perspective of yeah. your hand. And all you had to do was shift. It doesn't have to be hard and difficult and years and years of screaming and crying and therapy and deep work and reliving all the pain you've ever had in your past, that just re-traumatizes people. So there are way better ways. And, uh, you know, so I've made it my mission to let people know about it. You have to, you said she was suggest uh, suggestible, right? So yeah. you have to yeah. come in, obviously, you have to be willing to open up and you have to have do you uh, bring up something in particular that they want to work on prior to? Uh, yeah. So if people are resistant, I mean, how are you supposed to help them? No, of course. Right? Although yeah. I have had couples who came in, you know, where maybe the wife was very open to this and the guy was sitting there the whole time, like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. And we were able to still produce the sure. results because, you know, I understand the mind very well. And when I see someone resistant, I know how to speak their language to get past it. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. But in general, yes, someone has to be willing. But I will tell you, Sebastian, that almost everybody, at least back then, not now, because I think I've created enough credibility and success stories. I've been out there a long time that most people are just excited that we're working together. Yeah. But in the past, everybody would say, I'm hopeful, but skeptical. Mm. Because, you know, I see everybody else has got great results, but I'm a tough nut crack. You know, and, and you yeah. can see the resistance and their own self-sabotage immediately. So when we start, I usually try to create what's called a well-formed outcome, you know. So what would be a home run for you? How sure. what would you what would you need to see or hear or feel to know that this was like a huge breakthrough? And I get them to name it. And so that I know what they need to experience for them to go, wow, this was really powerful for me. And then I go help produce that result. Yeah. Wonderful. And then they go, wow. And then they believe it because the evidence came from them. And now when it, that evidence is satisfied, their mind says, yes, I believe this and it gets accepted. Love it. Yeah. That's awesome, Tim. Tim, you've uh, hosted and worked with some big names, including Bob Proctor, who is someone I, I think I mentioned to you last time that uh, my mom took me to one of his, uh, I don't know if it was one day workshop. I love your mom. Your mom I is love- awesome. <laughs> She's so cool. I haven't met her yet. I hope I do. Cause she sounds awesome. <laughs> she, is. she is pretty awesome. Yeah. So, um, I'm lucky with both parents. Pretty, pretty yeah. epic parents. Um, so you've worked with Bob Proctor, Les Brown, Seth Godin, Seth Godin, excuse me, and others. Yeah. Have you had any particular downloads or little nuggets that come to mind from working with such big names or hosting them in your podcast? Is there anything that comes to mind? They're like, oh, that's something I hadn't really thought of that they said that was like a click. I learn from every one of them. I am a student at heart, and so are they. All the big names that I've ever got the pleasure of hanging out with um, are students of success. They are always taking notes. They are always learning from others. They never believe they know everything. They're the first one to say, "Ah, I know a little bit of some things, but I'm ready. You know, they're a sponge. And so uh, Seth Godin in particular said two things that really were powerful. The first thing he told me, he said, you know, Tim, I don't do really any social media. So don't feel like you have to get out there and be on all these channels posting 10 times a day because it'll really stress you out. You know, just pick one or just focus on building your your newsletter and and sharing really high value content with the ideal people, your smallest viable audience, as he always likes to say. Smallest viable audience. Smallest viable audience, your niche, your ideal person, the person Mm -hmm. that you can describe. And usually the person you're describing is a lot like you. Because we like to work with people who are like us, right? And so you're describing the ideal person. If you're going to fish, you don't fish the ocean. You find your fishing spot with the perfect fish that you like to catch. And you know exactly the bait. You know exactly what time to reach them, right? And that's what you're doing with your audience, your smallest viable audience. And then share love letters with them. Marketing is just love letters. You're sharing love letters and writing love letters to people. You're not selling them. You're serving them in whatever way you can. And so, uh, so he said that you don't have, so since then I'm hardly ever on social media, I'll do some posting here and there, but I swear I lost half my hair trying to, <laughs> trying to be on LinkedIn and, and all these different, you know, all the different social medias. Yeah. 
It's a lot. And now there's clear evidence too that how it affects her brain. I mean, it's a dopamine casino. So it's, it's, yeah. you know, you're, you're opening it up to, to get a little dopamine hit and, and it affects you on how people engage with you. I mean, it's a lot. And I, you know, I'm guilty of it. I, and I do a lot of social media and I feel that I can get a lot out, but at times I'm just like, shit, I just, <laughs> it's so much. I want to take a break, you know? And you should. You know, yes. taking care of yourself will allow you, instead of getting one more thing done, put that energy back into you. Yeah. And then it'll make, it's not the quantity, it's the quality. So if your energy feels pure, it'll go through and connect sure. with people. But others can sense if you're just trying to crank out content. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's not content, it's connection. Yeah, that's a good point. Because it is needed. It's sort of nowadays, if it's, you know, if you're... It depends on what kind of career you've had, but if you're starting a career and let's say you are, you do want to speak or you do want to do these things, people, you know, companies are now looking at your social media. They're looking at these things that almost like a resume. So what do you say to those people that are like, well, but I'm being judged by, by my, or my engagement or my followers and, you know? Well, the first thing I'd say is who cares? I don't, I don't care if people are judging me because people are going to judge me no matter what I do. And so I the opportunities, like if, if I want to get this opportunity to speak here or there, they want me to have this much, uh, you know, reach. Yes. So again, I'm, my message is don't care about it. Okay. Truly, you have to surrender to that fear that you have to measure up in some in front of somebody else's eyes in order for you to be accepted so you can reach your goals. You that is nobody is going to determine your level of success and fulfillment except for you. Mm. That is the game we get sucked into. Yeah, but if this company wants me then I have to do this or that. Mm -hmm. No, think of it like Hollywood. There are plenty of people that are in movies that, you know, their family members are in movies so they have an in but there are also plenty of people that were living in the middle of nowhere that somehow did had no social presence, no social media presence, you know, did an audition. They look like they fit the role and they got booked. Right. So we do not have to uh, feel like we constantly have to please everybody else and have all these other things. Yeah. I've had some of the biggest names in the world on my podcast and, and my podcast isn't ranking number one. I don't even know what it's ranking because I don't really care. Yeah. <laughs> right. And I actually so, don't check. I never. My 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 dad will hit me up sometimes. Like, so how many people listen to your podcast? The last one. I'm like I have looked in like two months. <laughs> yeah. I don't care if anybody's listening to it. I had the best time hanging out with Les Brown and Ken Blanchard and you know and you name it. And so right. And so and I was just with Tom Hopkins and Michael Gerber of the E Myth right on Saturday. So I don't care if anybody saw it because I loved it. It gave me fulfillment. So if I'm talking to somebody and they're like, well, how much, you know, how many views do you get? That actually turns me off, you know, and I understand when they're doing it. I've had a hard time booking John Maxwell because, and he'll be on my show because I have so many of his friends that have been on my show and they will tell him, go talk to Tim. But his yeah. gatekeepers are always saying, well, you don't really have the numbers and you got to give me your reach. And I'm like, nope, see ya. John's missing out. Right. Because I am not getting caught up in that fear of not being enough, not having enough. That is what gets you in that in the, what, I, what I liked, what you called it, that uh, casino, you know, the, casino. yeah. The what? Say it again. Dopamine casino. Dopamine casino. Actually, actually, yeah. I got to pull that lever again, you know, and right. put in another coin. And that is costing you because the house always wins when you play that game. That's right. Yeah, That's right. Sure does. So, Tim, in your book, you mentioned six steps to manifesting anything. You want to hit those six without going, you know, super into each one, but you can as much as you'd like. So, all right. So I got to remember which ones are out of the book, right? But the first time, you know, when you want to manifest something, the first thing you do is you think about what do I actually want? Mm -hmm. right? What do I actually want to have? What would be a dream for me? And then you think about what's the fear that comes up? Because usually there's, you get the swallow, you get the tightness in your chest, and your mind starts thinking about what's getting in the way. And so instead of thinking about the, the logistics of what's getting in the way, what is the belief? So you ask yourself when you start to feel that anxiety. So step one is you figure out what you want. Step two is you are probably going to have that feeling of resistance because there's three phases of a breakthrough, resistance, confusion, and then breakthrough. 
Okay. Mm. So when we are, we figure out what we want. And then the sec thing, second thing is here comes the resistance of why we think we might not be able to have it. Not good enough. I don't have enough money. I don't have the right connections. I don't have, you know, I, I can't get motivated. I don't know what to do next. All the typical things we struggle with. So then you ask yourself, what would I have to believe in order to feel this way? What would I have to believe in order to feel this way? And then you keep asking yourself the same question over and over. Where I'd have to believe that I don't, you know, um, I don't have the right connections. Okay. Well, what else would I have to believe? Well, I'd have to believe that, um, you know, that even if I did, they wouldn't want to talk to me anyway. Well, what else would I have to believe, you know, that would keep me from having what I want? Well, I guess that, you know, why would they want to talk to me? I'm nothing special. And if you keep digging, you start to realize that the main core that we talked about in the beginning of the show is that, well, I don't, I'm not good enough. I'm not special enough. I'm not cool enough. Right. Which is a lie because I felt the same way before I met all those people. I'm like, why would they want to talk to me? You know, and after I got to know them, you know what they all said? I'm just a person just like you, you know, I'm nothing special. I'm good at my craft. Right. I've worked really hard for this, but you know, let's drop that stuff and let's just, you know, be real. And I'm like, that's so awesome. <laughs> right. So, so, um, and, the, and they want to help you too. Cause I find that really successful people that have a heart, you know, are always wanting to help and give anybody else a yeah. little because they know how hard it was. So that was step two, figure out what the big fear is. Step three, ask yourself a new question. What would I rather believe instead? What would I want to believe instead? You know, if I could believe anything and you can, because beliefs are just opinions, they're not facts. What would I rather believe instead? And then step four is if I had that belief, what's a big, bold move that I would take? If I had that belief, what's a big, bold move that I would make? And then you think about the big domino that would knock down all the other dominoes. For me, it was calling Les Brown. I had a friend, I got his phone number and I, I was scared to death. Why would he want to talk to me? I decided I'm going to do it anyway. I was, I wrote my, that one belief away book with Joe Vitale and Joe said, why don't you believe you're just a really lucky person, person, Tim, and things work out for you. And I said, okay, so I'm calling less. And, and I made that call and he answered and we had a great relationship now. And, uh, and if I wouldn't have had the courage to call him, that wouldn't have happened. He's the one that introduced me to Brian Tracy and then the doors flew open. What if he didn't pick up? Yeah. Well, he did it the first time, you know, and then I chickened out for a couple of months. And then the second time I decided to call him, which is what I'm telling you about now. And, and, uh, and so if he didn't pick up, I would have called again. And if he didn't pick up, I would have called again. And if he didn't, I would have called again. Tom Hopkins told me on Saturday, he said, the very first house I ever sold, I knocked on 64 doors of strangers and 63 of them said no. But on the 64th, I landed my first client and he sold more houses than anybody. He sold over 1500 houses in his career. He sold 365 houses in one year. Oh, wow. Right. And it started by getting 63 no's. So I would have had to call Les Brown. 63 times or 64 times or a hundred times until I got him to answer. Right. And, and maybe so, at that point, that also means that, okay, maybe it's someone else. <laughs> that's exactly right. Sometimes yeah. you get enough no's that you think, well, maybe it's not yet or not right. Sure. So you go to the next one. Right. But you keep asking. Mark Victor Hansen said that he said, Tim, you keep asking. He said, the reason I'm so successful is because I keep asking for what I want. Mm -hmm. I just keep asking. And a lot of times I don't get it, but I keep asking anyway. And a lot of yeah. times I do. Right. And so so that's four. You figure out what your big move is. Step five, give yourself a big hug. Right. Give yourself a big hug for being proud of yourself for actually going through this process instead of thinking, oh, this doesn't work or I don't have time for it. You know, give yourself a big hug. And then step six, act on it. You got the new belief and clarity about what to do next. Your big, bold move. Act on it. Put it into action. Those prosperity seeds will not grow in your pocket. You got to plant them in the earth so that they can bloom and grow into everything you ever wanted. Love it. Yeah. That's great, Tim. I love it. Tim, what's the most amount of people you've hypnotized at once? Mm. Because you do, you've done that. To In person <laughs> or yeah. via the internet? <laughs> Well, so, I know you've done it in person quite a lot. Yeah. Um, you've done crowds though, right? 
I have. I think the biggest crowd <laughs> that I actually did the hypnosis for, it was about 3,000. Wow. 3,000 people. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That so was a lot of fun. You, you, will you hypnotize me right now in live form? You're already in a trance. You just... <laughs> You're focused on what I'm saying. You're full of dopamine and serotonin right now. You're feeling good. See, people think a trance, you're supposed to be out of it, unconscious, right. not knowing what's going on. Uh-uh. Your television and now our smartphones are the greatest hypnotists on the planet because they get you focused and then they start influencing you in ways that you don't even know are happening. Right. Yeah. But yeah, I can take you through something if you want. Let's do it. Okay. All right, so I want you to go ahead and close your eyes. There's an old expression. It says, when you learn to go within, you never go without. So close your eyes and focus in on your breathing. I want you to breathe in through your nose. And if anybody's watching this, follow along. Close your eyes and go with this as well. So breathe in through your nose, down to your belly, and slowly exhale. When you breathe in, you may notice the air feels cool. And when you exhale, the air feels warm. And that happens every time. I want you to imagine that cool air comes in and the warm air leaves and you feel more relaxed and at ease. That cool air is positive, loving, healing, soothing oxygen that flows down into the center of your body and turns all the lights on, making everything feel open and warm, bright and safe and peaceful inside. And then every time you exhale that warm air, I want you to imagine scooping up any tension or stress, worry or doubt, any of that yucky stuff we tend to bottle up inside. You just imagine Sebastian scooping it up, breathing it out, and sending it away. You didn't want that stuff anyway, so you just let it go. Good riddance. Now I want you to imagine that we save some sunshine from one of our nice, warm days. We bring that sunshine into this room. We shine it down over you and it feels like being on a vacation. Imagine that warm sunshine massaging down through your scalp, pouring down the back of your head into your neck and shoulder muscles. You know what it's like to be outside on a warm summer's day as a kid and just kind of playing and having fun and feeling the heat of the sun on the back of your shoulders. So imagine that warm sunshine massaging across your shoulder blades and then running down along either side of your spine, relaxing and releasing, releasing and relaxing and just letting go. The larger muscles and the tinier ones softening, loosening. You let it run all the way down into your lower back and that feels good. Then you take another slow power breath, breathe in through your nose, slowly exhale and send that sunshine over your shoulders and down into your arms, filling your upper arms, your forearms, your hands and fingers with that warm healing light. And in your mind, I want you to imagine thinking to yourself, I wonder how much more relaxed I can get my arms to feel. And you might move or adjust at any moment. Get even more comfortable. You might imagine your arms feeling light, like you're made out of feathers, just kind of floating on a breeze. Or maybe you imagine your arms feeling so heavy with relaxation, it's like you're made out of wet sand, so comfy and at ease, you don't even want to move. Now, whatever you experience, that's going to be what's right for you. And then whenever you're ready, why don't you take one more of those Relaxing, power breaths in, breathe in through your nose, fill those lungs all the way. And then when you exhale, imagine sending that sunshine down into your lower body. Take that relaxation from your arms and send it down into your legs like a wave of energy. That sunshine relaxes your hamstrings and it moves down the backs of your knees and pours down into your calf muscles, this warm, healing light. And then it flows down over the top sides and bottoms of your feet. And just like opening the drain of a bathtub and watching the water roll down the tub and out the drain, and then it just kind of fades away. I want you to imagine that 
any feelings that are not calming, soothing, or empowering, they just run down your body and right out through the soles of your feet, and they just fade away. So the whole rest of our time together is spent with you filling back up with only good, wonderful, peaceful feelings that help you feel relaxed and confident, focused and inspired so that you can show up in a big way and live your best life now so that you can have fun feeling good and adding value and feeling fulfilled so that every day you're getting from the day instead of just through the day. Now, I want you to take some of that deep feeling of relaxation and gently move it up into your eyelids. Make the muscles in your eyelids feel so sleepy that they just take a little nap for just a few moments. Imagine those eyelids are like heavy garage doors that you've closed down and locked shut. You make those eyelids feel so heavy and so relaxed that the harder you try to lift them or open them, the more heavy they feel. Now the eyebrows will lift up and down easy, but those eyelids feel so heavy and stuck that the harder you try to tug, the heavier they feel, which relaxes you even deeper. Go ahead and satisfy that sensation. Give those eyes a little tug and notice the harder you try to open them, the more heavy they feel. Good. Stop trying. Now give the eyebrows a little lift. Those eyebrows lift up and down easy. That's right. Good. Stop trying. Now I want you to imagine thinking about one idea or one experience that you'd like to have in your life, whether you want to feel more confident in a situation, whether you want to feel peaceful about something that's going on. Maybe you want to have or experience something in your life. The key to manifesting anything is to imagine that it's already here, that you already have it. You're already looking the way you want to look, feeling the way you want to feel, and behaving in ways that leave you feeling proud of yourself. Imagine already having what you desire as though it's already here. Imagine yourself in this situation having what you want or who you want or what you want to experience. And as you have it now, imagine the feelings that come with it. The joy, the exhilaration, the passion, the fun, the excitement, the yay, that feeling inside or that calm, that bliss, that euphoria, that serenity, whatever it is that you want, you want it because of the feelings that come with it. Well, imagine having those feelings right now. Imagine having these feelings inside of you of whatever it is that you desire. These feelings then move out into the universe like a ray of sunshine and then attracts those experiences and those energies to you. It brings it to you. You're not chasing anything. You're drawing and attracting what you desire to you by already imagining having it and being it and living it. Now, as you imagine what, you heart, what your heart desires now, as though it's here and now, you are literally drawing and attracting what you want into your life. It is now here and on the way. And every moment that you take a step towards what you want, know deep in your heart that what you want is also pursuing you. And every day, in every way, you'll continue feeling better and better. Alive, refreshed, recharged, excited, renewed. This is the next chapter of your life. You are awakened. And every day, in every way, you just keep feeling better and better and better. Now, in a moment, I'm going to count from one up to five. When I say five, I want you to know those seeds of greatness are now planted inside of you and will continue to grow. In a moment, when you open your eyes, you will feel a little sleepy, but about 10, 15 minutes from now, you're going to have a boost of energy and you're going to be in the best mood all week long. Beginning with a count of one, as you start to come up, take a slow power breath in, feeling good. Two, knowing that you're exactly the person that you are supposed to be and you are amazing. Three, feeling rested and refreshed. Four, almost all the way there. And then slowly, gently, with the count of five, slowly opening your eyes, feeling rested and refreshed.
Great job. Woohoo! Yay! All right. Welcome back. Thanks for flying Hypnotic Airlines. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed your trip. <laughs> Thank you for that, Tim. That was wonderful. How you feeling? Good? Feeling good. I mean, there's definitely uh, there's an extra challenge in letting go and knowing that we're doing a recording. And then after going through it, um, for me, it, it hit the most towards the end um, when you had me, you know, really imagining those that scene already feeling it and it just really felt really nice it was a big it was a mixture of excitement joy and relaxation at once yeah um and so just bringing that feeling in to the now is, is beautiful and i really enjoyed it yeah good that's exactly how it feels yeah really and if others it. are in, having different experiences it's just because of where we're at our beliefs and going through it you know, I've seen plenty of people in groups where I'm working with a group and some are really into it and some are just sitting there staring at me and some kind of have one eye open, Yeah. <laughs> you know, our level of trust or mistrust and right. skepticism. And so I'm, I'm so happy that you just went for it. And, uh, and it was great. Absolutely. Thanks, yeah. Tim. So, Tim, one of the things that you're doing by doing what you do is you're creating conscious leaders. And as you know, this podcast is all about it's about conscious business and it's about conscious leadership. You can't really have conscious business without conscious leadership. And that's one thing that you're doing when you're speaking to companies and you're talking to leaders, you're having them, you know, remove those self-limiting beliefs, but really having it come from a positive and conscious way to create better leaders to then uh, inspire other people. Yeah. Um, and then I also hear, heard you say that, People in general don't quit their jobs, they quit their bosses, which means it's just so important for leaders to be better leaders in the world that we're living in, to, to be conscious leaders. So what do you think, in your opinion, are two traits that a conscious leader really must embody today? Great question. They're always working on themselves. They are a student of success. Consciousness just means emotional intelligence. You can only live up to your own level of self-awareness. And unfortunately, a lot of people have a very low level of self-awareness. Most people are walking around with the same MS-DOS program they were born with. You know, that we're really not updating the way that we could be. Most leaders have never had any yeah. form of leadership training. So, so be a student of success. And then the second trait of conscious leaders is uh, they're always pouring into their people. They realize that a great culture is a culture where everybody feels safe and everybody feels like they belong and they create experiences that keep a conversation going. The more we are having conversations, the more we recognize our unconscious biases, the more we um, are recognizing the assumptions that we had about others or in conversations that are false, and we recognize them because we're talking about it. You know, the, the whole reason why we have, um, I take companies through experiences that last, you know, a year, and I've worked with companies for six years is because we got to keep the conversation going. And the more you do that, the more money you make, the higher your engagement is, the more happy you are when you're at work and home. I mean, it's extraordinary. So conscious leaders are always developing themselves and then always pouring into their people. Don't grow your business, grow your people and your business mm. will grow exponentially. Yeah, I love that. That's wonderful. Thank you so much, Tim. Tim, where can people find you? Where can people get your wonderful book? You can get the book from Amazon. You can go to timshur.com, S-H-U-R-R, timshur.com uh, to learn more about my speaking stuff. And you can also, uh, if you go to powermindsetprogram.com, powermindsetprogram.com, uh, you can get a free copy of a new program called The Power of Your Unconscious Mind. And uh, it will continue to take you on this journey that you and I have started. Wonderful, wonderful. And of course, I'll include all the links in the notes so thank you so much tim for being on really appreciate you being on today and uh, please keep doing you you're truly a conscious leader yourself so keep doing you thank you again yeah right back at you brother i love the work you're doing and thank you for for allowing me to share my message today thank you tim hey guys i really hope you enjoyed that episode you know it takes a lot to put these things together but i truly love doing it if you enjoyed this episode or the show in general and you listen to it on audio podcasts please take some time to give it a review. It would really mean a lot to me. And if you watch the video, please go ahead and just click subscribe and share it with somebody that you think would like it. It would really mean the world to me and it helps keep the show alive. Visit SebastianNom.com for more content 
and follow me on Instagram at sebnam. That's S-E-B-N-A-U-M. Thanks again for spending your time with me. I know it is valuable. I hope you have a great rest of the day and week. Till next time.